All right, everybody. Here's the Arcade 1-Up Street Fighter Edition. And I just wanted to go over the changes that I made to uh, turn it into not only a main cab, but just modify it. And again, I'm using ETA Prime's uh, uh, tutorial, which I will have a link for in the show notes and whatnot, and I'll try to have it pop up. But real quick, just to come back here and let people kind of see what I've done. So this is removable. You can totally screw it in if you want to. And in here, you can see I've got the board. I'm still trying to find something that will hold it into place. But here's the board that uh, converts the, uh, the video signal. And then I've got the two arcade wiring harness boards. I turned the Street Fighter inside it out so that uh, it was only black on the bottom because obviously there's more games in there. And there's the Raspberry Pi all wired up. So, and that's all there is to it. I mean, it's only really two pieces. The thing that'll take you the longest time is wiring everything up. So the other thing I've done is I've added, so the Pi turns on when power is put onto it and cut from it. So I've got a power strip here. And when I flip the red switch there, that supplies power to everything and powers it up. And then I've got a speaker system. So it's a 2.1 speaker system I had laying around the house. I didn't want to use the speaker that they wired up. You'll hear in a sec, and hopefully it comes through on the video, it comes out pretty good. Um, and uh, the other benefit is it's got a volume control that I hid right back here so that while I'm playing the game, if I want to adjust the sound, you just reach up there and do it, and people don't even realize you've done it. Um, this is where the speaker normally is, and yeah, no. Um, didn't want to use it. It's not a very good speaker anyway, and it's mono. I wanted true stereo. So... The buttons. You can totally use the buttons that are supplied, and I did. Um, ETA Prime didn't think the quality of the buttons was very good. I like them. They're pretty springy. They look and feel the way I want them to. Uh, everything is good with that, and uh, they are soldered also, which I don't know if that matters, but I do like that they're soldered. So I continue to use the buttons. You can also use the joysticks that are provided. I didn't like those. So these are actual HAP joysticks that I picked up in a, actually they're HAP clones that I picked up in a clone kit. You get the HAP joysticks, you get two joysticks with the ball top and everything. You get a set of buttons. I got these fun little goofy LED light up buttons that I can do later. I got the two USB kits uh, to like wire everything for USB and I got all of the wiring for everything, which I didn't need because I use these buttons uh, other than the joystick ones. Um, and it's all 40 bucks shipped. You have to wait like two, three weeks uh, for China to, uh, to, for it to be sent from China, but it worked out. Uh, these are a little more ergonomic. They're more firm. They seem more precise with the eight way. They're wired better. Um, I really liked them. So I did have to rewire them, or I did have to wire them, although it's a very easy wiring. It's literally plug and play. Uh, the other thing I had to do was the holes for these, and you'll see it in ETA Prime's video, the holes for anything you get to replace it will most likely not line up with the holes that are carved for it. So I had to drill holes. And all I did was, I've never drilled before in my life. My brother-in-law had a power drill, he brought it over. I just looked at the bits that and found the bit that he had that fit right in the hole for the pre-done drill. And then I lined these guys up exactly where I wanted them to go. And then I just marked it with uh, with some some like grease pen, with like a white grease pen. Marked it, double checked it twice, drilled, drilled not too deep. As you can see, it doesn't come through or anything. And then they sit firm. I mean, this is a firm connection. So, uh, and it works out very well. So I really like it. Uh, the last thing I want to point out before we get started is I'm really not keen on uh, Arcade 1UP's customer support. When you call them, you have to wait on hold usually 45 minutes to an hour. They don't give you any which way or the other. There's no email or anything. They do work with you once you have a ticket open with email, but the guy said I could reply to it and continue to follow up on the email for the ticket. I did not get that. I gave them a poor review when their review came up. They did not follow up with me on that, so I'm not pleased with it. But what I did was I, you can automatically on the website when you buy these order the plastic covers and they you can see over here they sent that to me and then they also sent me for some odd reason three replacement cutouts 
So if this ever were to wear away, which is, which is why I don't have it covered right now, I have three full replacements of these if I ever wanted to. And then if I wanted to put the plastic cover over it, I could. But right now it looks very authentic this way, so I like it. And apparently at Walmarts and stuff, they rub away. Maybe I don't have that much use with it. And I'm also fortunate enough to not have very sweaty palms, but I didn't have that problem yet. And I've had this for about two months now. And it gets relatively heavy, uh, mild usage actually, I'll say. Probably about... And no more than about five to ten hours a week. Anyway, um, there is some defects, and I've got some pictures on there, but to the bezel. The bezel itself, luckily the LCD seems fine, but the bezel has some rubbing on here. There's also some scratches and whatnot, and I've pulled the bezel out multiple times and tried cleaning it. It's not cleanable. So I wanted them to send me a replacement bezel, which they did say they would do as part of their warranty, but... I can't get a support guy to understand what the hell I'm talking about. I thought bezel was specific enough. That's why I've not been too pleased with their customer support because every time I order a bezel, I get a new control kit, whatever. Uh, so let's show you what it looks like when you turn it on. I've got it all ready to go, all wired. Um, and this is what happens now when I just want to play a game. So I come over here, flip this on. In about five to 10 seconds, it auto detects the screen and the pie starts up. I do have an intro video, so. It's just a fun little intro video I got online. I'll probably credit the person who made it uh, in the description. And then it loads up. So I'm using a Ninja Turtles theme that I just found online. Um, I do have Arcade. Um, I had Atari 2600 ROMs on there, so they stayed. Same thing with Mega Drive, but Neo Geo and Arcade are what I mostly stick to. Although I did keep the Nintendo and Super Nintendo ones, just because, like, how cool would it be, right, just to give an example, to, like, go and play Castlevania, right, on, on, a, on arcade controls. I think it's kind of cool. So, anyway... Um, one of the things I noticed was config configuring the buttons, and it just bases itself on the wiring. Now, ETA Prime talks about how to wire it, and that all works fine, but one of my biggest problems was it doesn't necessarily... I, the, the best way I can say it is it doesn't necessarily do... Uh, the buttons don't exactly do what I want them to uh, in the menu, but everything works fine once we get into the arcade. And so, anyway... So strong is to select, this is back, so B and A. So anyway, if I hit strong, it'll go to the list. And I do not pull full ROM sets. I just pick what I know I'd like. Um, and you know, this is where I'll say, the biggest headache you're gonna get once you get it all wired up is gonna be configuring everything because things like Sega games don't run well on MAME, LR MAME 2003, so you gotta switch them to 2000 and you can set that up on the controller and everything. Uh, but I did it actually in advance. So that's why I recommend if you can, test your Pi and, and get it working. The other thing is you'll see like Battletoads is more of a four by three, whereas Battle Garega is a vert screen. So you do have to change in the RetroArch settings, uh, some of the uh, configurations and whatnot. Again, I'm not gonna go too deep into it for this video because I'm just not ready to do a tutorial. But at the end of the day, just keep in mind that you will definitely be jacking with config files for the largest portion of this project. Um, but yeah, with that, you're just kind of ready to go and uh, trying to figure out like what we would want. Oh yeah, I switched over. Let's pick something fun to, to show off just to show people like how it works. Got Darius. Um, here, I think Da Parodius, or maybe it's Parodius Da. We'll head down to that. I've played a lot of these. Mortal Kombat seems to work fine. Okay, you know what? Let's do Mortal Kombat, right? Everybody's wanted Mortal Kombat. Everybody's really eager to see Mortal Kombat uh, come to uh, these arcade one-ups in a minute. You can do your own custom splash screen so it hides that it's running and all that stuff. Um... So here it goes and, you know, and I've got it wired up to add a coin. And I mean, there you go. So it's working. And then if I do want to exit out, I just hit 
well, here, I'll just at least show that it works and it runs at full speed and stuff like that. Raiden's the easiest because you don't actually have to push any buttons, <laughs> but they'll walk right into it. It's the best. One-handed fighting, it's, it's awesome. There we go. Anyway, so when I don't want to play a game anymore, I just hit player one and player two together and it goes out. And then let's say I want to shut this guy down. All I do is I hit the start button, I come down here to quit, and I just pick shut down system. And you'll see, it says, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. It'll do the normal Raspberry Pi log off. And then it's pretty much shut down. I warn people, like, you'll get just a no signal thing here, um, which is fine. I warn people to not shut down too quick. You can hurt your Pi image if you do that. So you want to kind of give it a minute. As you can see, the screen totally knows that, uh, that there's no signal coming to it, so it shuts itself down. Technically, I'm just good to go. But power is still being supplied to the Pi, and there's no way to turn on a Raspberry Pi unless you wire a power button to it, which doesn't really help my cause here at all. And the speakers are also powered because they're powered speakers. So what I usually do is wait till about now, about a minute afterwards, and then I go and just cut power to the, the strip, and then when I'm ready to go again, there we go. So anyway, this accompanies an article. So if you want to go check it out, check it out on Gaming History 101. And in the description, I'll have all of the tutorials I use. But all in all, um, the uh, the arcade one up is fine if you think you just want to play basically Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition your whole life, because that's really the only strong version of a game that's in here. Um, and for me, I wanted it to do a lot more. And so a little bit of time, I really only had to buy one part. Uh, the wiring was my own choice, but uh, if you really just want to get in and do this, you can get away with using the wirings that, that's built into it and you just need to buy the piece that adapts the LCD to the uh, Pi, which is 30 bucks online. ETA Prime's got links and stuff like that. And then uh, you just need the USB encoders, which will run you like 10 bucks. Other than that, you're in and out, you got it working, but this is the setup that I did. So anyway, with that, this is Fred Rojas saying peace, out.